Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. I have the independent Chevelle behind me here, and as you can see, it took on a tremendous amount of damage from its last computation at Bristol Motor Speedway. Now, I guys gotta get this ready, patched up, and put back together for, I think, sadly, its last hurrah. Now I'm going to give you fellers and fellas a close look at the damage back here. It's actually a lot worse than we initially thought. But first, let's talk about what I said. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be the car's final hurrah. But don't worry, that doesn't mean it's going away or going to be forgotten. But think about this car. It started out as just another old vehicle with a cool paint job that I just personally wanted to save from the crusher or being a parts car. And then... Fate would have it, I got connected with the previous owner, and we all found out that it was a memorial to 9-11. And that, for me, just changed everything. It snowballed from there, and now we have a thousand horsepower car that means everything to everyone. It's been street driven, it's done drag and drives, it's been drag racing, it's ran nine seconds at 150. It has been in multiple burnout competitions and place. There's been hundreds of kids sitting in this car taking photographs, multiple friends and families riding in it and driving it. It just means so much to me. So it's not going away, but I think it's to the point where we need to stop tearing it up. It's to the point where it's so deteriorated, I need to try to save what's left, where it's counterproductive to what I'm trying to do with this channel and help other people feel motivated to do. And it's to the point where I don't really think we could do a full restoration. Let me explain. I'm going to get you fellers and fellas in here closer in a minute, but give you an idea initially. I'm standing at the center of the vehicle. Look at this quarter panel compared to this one. And unfortunately, this is going to keep happening. I've kind of explained this a couple times throughout the years, bits and pieces here and there, but here's where we're at. Frame swap. A lot of you have mentioned that, it's a great idea. But the thing is, the body is in such terrible condition. If I try to take this off of this frame, there's nothing left. In fact, the only thing holding this body on said frame is the roll cage and the front two rad supports. That is legitimate and the honest truth. There's really no body left. Some have said, just hang new quarters on it. Well. There's nothing to hang in the quarters to. We need inner fender wells, outer fender wells. But if you put inner fender wells, you need a trunk. But there's nothing to put the trunk to. So now you need a rear valance and a front floor. But then the floor can't attach to anything, so you need inner rockers and outer rockers. What I'm saying is by the time we're done, this car would be on a rotisserie, and $40,000 later, we have a brand new sheet metal car that to me wouldn't look or feel like independence. It just wouldn't feel or mean the same, I guess, to me personally. So basically we have what we have. I'm going to try to straighten this thing out and then we have to make the decision and chew on it while we're fixing this. Maybe we pull the drivetrain out of this and build a different burnout car and we just put something back into this and we could still enjoy it. Street drive it, take it on events, hot rod power tour. I don't know. I mean, I don't got all the answers. I'm just saying. Or do we pull the Pro Charger off and put an 871 through the hood and a couple fuel make it happeners? Think Matchbox car, do the same thing, but just keep it out of the burnout pit. You know what I mean? It just needs too much work to be safe to go down the drag strip, and I don't want to keep tearing it up in the burnout pit. So that's kind of my thoughts and feelings on this. You guys can comment, bleep bloop down there below. It's been a really hard decision. I've been all over the map. And at one point I was going to just drop it off somewhere and say, make it so. But I go back to the point of, if it's not this, if it doesn't smell like rust, if it doesn't bleed America, it's just not the same car to me. So let's get in here. I'm gonna show you guys this and then we're gonna to have to come up with a plan to fix this because this is, this is something else. By the way, a lot of you are probably going, whoa, 
the shop has really changed. Yes, it has. We've been super busy here. We're still not done organizing, but we're finally getting this how I envisioned it when we started construction. So now the lifts are way down there and we've got more shelving and we finally got nuts and bolts and stuff like that. If you want to see that, go to Vice Grip Lodge and there's a video on that, the whole process. Here's where this all started. I hit a K barrier, as you can see. I got lost in the smoke and there was a boot and uh, came around on a donut. And thankfully we hit the wheel and uh, damaged that and probably the rear end will have to take a look, but that prevented this from going in further. But what it did was kind of started the chain reaction here. It split the seam. It obviously did a pretty good number here. It weakened this side of the quarter panel. Then when I whipped her around and tapped it over here, uh, right here, what happened is this folded into the bumper and then the bumper took the brunt of it and just shifted everything over. There is straight. So basically the width of a 295, a good foot, maybe more. Here's a look at this side. It's, I hate even looking at it. I've kind of been avoiding this because it just hurts my heart bone. The problem with the Chevelles are, this isn't connected to the frame. It's, I, I don't even understand it. Here's the frame right there. That's the frame rail. The other frame rail is about over here. And that's what the hitch assembly is attached to. So that is actually center. That's what I was referencing. The reason this whole shift happened, there is where the body mount bolt should be, but the frame is all rotted out. Okay. And there should be one over here as well, which these would be the access ports. That one's rolled up into there for those body mounts to take place. They're just, they're gone. There's no body mount bolts there. There's none down here. This part, if you remember back when we patched it, we got, we made one, I think. And I'm not sure if that's holding in, but I got these two new ones up here and the roll cage. That's what's holding the body in place here. We could see where the original patch panel was laid over top of the original car. And that kind of started the rusting. You can see it was rusted before and this was laid over. Some moisture and stuff got trapped in here and just really accelerated the rot process. I have this panel. We may try to even put that back on. But the first big thing we have to tackle is getting this not only backwards, but outer is, is this way. So we can try to get that down. It's a big ask, but I want to get it done. I want this to look as good as possible when we go send this thing down in Florida. Engine, great. Transmission, great. I got a cooling fan down we need to look at. I got to get this core support on here, I borrowed a couple parts for the Hemi half. Everything else is in excellent working condition. Tune is great, everything like that. It's more cosmetic and then the one fan. So I'm gonna ponder on this for a minute. I do have some hydraulic stuff. I got come alongs, I got chains, I got a tractor. We got all sorts of stuff. I think I'm probably gonna start just by taking these lights out and just seeing if we can get some anchor points to start pondering here. Just to get the old tumbler tumbling, you know. We've got some stuff laying out there in Rusty Acres, or we can go next door to Hubcap Hills too for possible other things that we can make a burnout vehicle. You know what I mean? A couple that come to mind for me that would be kind of cool would be that Remember that El Camino with the flames on it and the license plate floor? That would be a good candidate because it is really, really rotted. I mean, it needs every single panel on it. Floors, rockers, bed, I mean, everything. So I wouldn't feel terrible bouncing that off of the wall a couple times, you know? 
Yeah, they look pretty cool. And then I've also got that short box, might be a GMC, same thing. It needs three of everything. And that one doesn't have a title, and I think the VIN plate is, let's be honest, it was probably stolen three, 13 times or something, you know? So that's not going on the road, and it also needs a tremendous amount of work. We have a short bed Chevrolet pickup. I don't know, or maybe we go pick up something else. I'm just saying, there's options out there if we want to continue doing this. Well, what do we got now? Well, we do have, if I could get this forward a little bit and get a strap around this bumper later, I think we can get a lot done. But I got a crazy thought. What if I hook the hook to my winch that's on the ramp truck and then try to pull this and maybe I could even get the back of the truck touching the ball so the car wouldn't move. So this would have to give. See what I'm saying? I think it's a 12 pound, 12,000 pound winch. That ought to pull it out of there. At least get us started and see what we got. We need more angleage outage, but if we could get a little bit this way too, it might even kind of just, I don't know. I'm just for guessing here, you know what I mean? It's like uh, body work by hand grenades. Close is close enough. What do we even got here to center this guy on the, on the left? 21 inches or 93 waffles for you Canadians. All right, let's go see what the truck's got. I already forgot what I said, 42 I think. What's this one? 20 to 21 inches, all be dipped. It was like I was made for it. Oh, this old thing fires right up. Ignore the squeaking bell. Yeah. This thing's longer than a bluebird bus on a Sunday night. Oh, I can't see nothing. Okay, am I gonna hit the car or the lift first? I don't know. That felt like carriage. Okay. There's some pipes for your listening. Did we, are we accomplishing anything? I don't know. Wish I could get this. Hmm. Might need to put the casters on the left. We could just Get some angleage and then pull, but I gotta try to get that out first. Let's see if this works. Yep. Yeah. Jack Frost is nipping at my toes. The hinge buttons on this truck are bad. Wow! Oh, damage, damage. Oh, whew. That didn't feel right. Okay. Ignore the pain. I know this looks wrong, but for some reason it feels really right. It might work. Oh my goodness. I feel like it's completely reversing the damage. You gotta be kidding me. We're getting a lot closer here. <laughs> Brand new. Okay, now we just need a, maybe we do that again, but this way? I mean, I can't believe it, but I'm looking right at it. That undid a tremendous amount, and it even like flattened this out. Now, I just gotta grab it. See, we can get a strap through here now, maybe. And we just gotta pull it this way. So I think what I'm gonna do is, let's just fire independence up, take it outside. I'll get the truck sideways and this this way and then bring this over and hook it and then we'll go this way. Yeah, plan. I got greedy here. I'm gonna try to just take her a little more right here. I think we 
need to try to get up in there somehow. There ain't much left to grab to us. Okay. All right, let's fire this thing up and get her outside. It's cold out. Oh boy. The old block of bigs did pretty good, actually. I don't have any fueling set up under 70, because I didn't really ever think I'd be starting it in the winter, basically, but it is cold out, so that's just fine. So now I'm thinking, can a guy just bring this like this? It might pull the car, actually, but I got a plan for that if that happens. For now, I'm just going to hook this up and see if we can just, you know, bring her into spec. Hopefully this rear glass doesn't blow out. I can't believe it didn't blow out on the impact, but we'll see what happens here. This is uh, this is going to be different. Give it a shot. It's doing it. See how easy that moves? It's working. It's doing the thing. Car's moving. Come on, just a little more. <laughs> oh, it's so much better. Okay, now what? We just need, we gotta give her one good crunch. Oh, okay, we need quite a bit, I guess. But it's better now. Don't get down. Things are happening. I gotta prevent this from, okay, I got an idea here. Well, we need a really heavy anchor and I got just the thing. <laughs> yep. Got this thing used for next to nothing. Just got it running. I don't know if it's gonna actually start or not, but it would be nice. Yes. Okay, now the other issue. I think the shift solenoid is shot. Come on. Give me, give me any gear. Okay, I got reverse. Can I somehow back out of here? I'm gonna try. Okay, well, that's only got reverse and I can't shut it off now. So it's here. And it's gonna have to stay there. But now that we got an anchor, this seems this seems fine. All right. We even got a little bit of an angle on it. It's pulling the truck. There it goes. It's doing the thing. No. I'll be dead. I can't even believe it, but I'm looking right at it. But does, what does it relax to though? Yeah, we need more. We gotta go a little extra. A little more still. Hang in there, Independence. Just, we're just giving her a little, it's like pulling tooth. Just grit your teeth. We might have to call that a little bit more. I got 
can't stop there. It's cracking all the bondo up here. I don't want to blow that glass out. But look, the hitch is almost in the center of the license plate. The trunk might close. Why don't I get that up here and just we can tickle it up there a little bit. Don't need a lot here, so just take it easy. I saw the trunk just kind of buckle up a little bit. That might be... Wow. We can maybe get in there. Fix that up a little bit. Come look at this, Batman. Or Bailey, come here. Look. Is it? It looks pretty good, huh? Yeah. How are you going to get this? What's that? How are you going to get this? Does it need to come out, you think? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit right there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, just the thing for that. Okay. Well, the old redneck frame rack is working pretty good here, got to be honest. I think we need just a tickle of outage right here. Seems like this side of the bumper is leaned in a hair. I got everything just wound up. Noises. Noises are happening. I don't know if that was a good pop. I can't believe this is working. It looks great. I think we fixed a bunch of stuff from the first time I put it in the wall. If I'm being honest, I could see a, the, the, the side light now. And then the bumper actually lines up to the trunk lid. Never did that before. <laughs> By the hour. Pfft, I'll fix it. Look at this. It's coming right back around. This line is looking a lot better. So is this one. So is that. It relaxed a little bit over here, but I don't want to shoot out the back glass there. This is fine. This will go back. Look how far that was pushed in. That's what this was sitting on. Get that bent back. I think the fuel system's okay. That was fixed. Making some progress here. I might still try to body work this a little bit with some slide hammers. This is bothering me. Can we get that up a little bit? Might get rid of this thing. This is the last dance. It's gotta look sharp. Maybe we put one pin in it. The reason I say one is I don't really wanna cover up this right there. And what saved this deck lid is it always pops open, and then we hit the wall. Notice this is straight as a laser beam. Well, that's good. Okay, let me get my slide hammer, see if we can do something here. Well, we've sanded and hammered and pulled and did everything. I got it. I think it's looking actually not that bad. We've got shape in here again. All this has shape. This seems to be fine. I cut out all of that jagged rust and stuff in here, cleaned this up a little bit. Pulled this back out down here. Got the inside down and out. I'm gonna wipe this down, rust treat it now, 
primer it and then see if we could hang that chunk on that I have. Try to get more of a corner panel shape on. Once we get this done, don't forget, we still have the drinker side to try to massage a little bit if we can. Not much left over there either, but just trying to make it look as good as I possibly can with what I got here. Here's the chunk I got. This actually came off in Indianapolis, I think. Went back after the burnout competition and it was still there, thankfully. That's where that goes. You can see it's been run over a couple times. This is flattened. That needs to be shaped under and then the wheel well arch needs massaged. Now keep in mind, there's, there's nothing left here. So when this tire pops in uh, Bradenton, it's done. But she's gonna have her dress on before the competition. She's gonna look good. So I think what we'll do, I'm gonna try to shape this a little bit first before I put it on the car. Because once I get it on, it's just, it's so delicate. You know what I'm saying? You pick it up? Pick it up when I'm putting down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seems like most of you are. I wonder if a guy can reinforce this a little bit. Let's see what I got. You know what a guy's thinking. Could I cut out a little bit of metal here and try to back this thing? Okay, before we put it in, give it just a little bit more stability and a chance, you know, for this to hang in there because it's a little lonely right now. Looking from all the blown tires whipping on the inside. So here's the plan, if and a guy had one. I'm going to go around and pop rivet this from the inside, not go crazy with this, for the stability. The reason I'm doing it from the inside is the small button will be on the outside, so it's not as noticeable. Uh, then we'll flip it over, spritz it up a little bit. This is oiled, as you can see. That shouldn't rust for a long time. Not, <laughs> you know, that it matters too much, but I'm gonna get this done, then we'll work on the big project, which is getting it affixed to the car. I'm drilling away on this, working, and Bentley comes in to show me his school project. I made a little electric turbo, and it has a little motor on the back. You can flip that, it spins it, and the air actually comes out. <laughs> this is really cool. Thanks. Yeah, it's working, bud. Good job, man. If you take some brake pad rejuvenation spray, and just spin it around. Now it's a poor man's paint thinner. Now we're just gonna get in here and just, you know, clean this up. We're prepping it, is what I'm trying to tell you here. Yeah, that's looking good. All right. Maybe up in here. We're probably gonna be up in here. Just let it rain. I'm gonna treat this rust so that could start drying while we're farting around with other stuff. Then I gotta find some colors and some things so we can Try to spruce this little scratch on the fender here up a little bit. Don't you worry, Independence. No one's even going to be able to tell. This surgery down here went uh, fairly well. There were some complications under anesthesia. Anastasia? Or is that a princess? I can't remember. But anyway, all is well. Clean up pits. Same thing I've used since day one, fellas. It's cheap and easy. This will turn black. It has some sort of chemical thing. Molecular stuff it does. And it doesn't take this away. It doesn't fix it, essentially, but it's going to slow it down. And that's what we're looking to do here. And the nice thing about this is 
I found is you could just paint right over the top of it. It's already doing the thing. Woo! She's got some stank on her. Took my professional automotive body clamps, hooked that onto my finger brake, which is really accurate. Measures it even. And take all that out to the Tommy Hard 100. And brought a ridge around on the bottom. So I think this one ran over after it came off and we lost the shape, but I'll be dipped. Good enough for the girls we date. Whoops, hold on. Oh, done. I'll bring this around a little bit. Might wait till I get it up on the rig because then we'll have some fasteners, you know, and then We'll do the thing. Guy's gonna bring some primer in here now and uh, just cover up some of this bare metal and whatnot. And then let this start drying as well. Well, that's gotta sit and dry for a few minutes. That'll be flat, it won't be shiny like that. I went ahead and pre drilled this just because I figured it was gonna be, you know, a mess trying to do everything at once. So I've kind of got. I don't know, they're every three inches or something like that along here. I might try to clean these up to burr them just a little bit because this is so wavy. It's going to be tough getting that rivet to seat all the way, you know. But we're going to do our best. Well, well, this is still drying. Self-healing over there. Moved on to hood pins. I'd kind of like to get... A hood pin put into the trunk pin. Boot pin, it's a pin. That, you know. Anyway, the gate latches don't really latch well, turns out, of vehicles. So I think I'm going to go just for, you know, right in here. And uh, let's see if we can make something happen. I do that by... Lining that up with the trunk. Line that up here. Sender, send it. And then we gotta send through that. Somehow I pulled a mouse house out of the trunk. Literally. <laughs> That's, that's independence. Pulled my bit out and that's what I'm getting. Just full of mouse house. All right, I'm gonna direction line these up just a little bit. Get this bolted in, super easy. Just nut on each side, set the depth. Might even put the little fancy trim ring on her. And then we'll have an actual boop, 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 boop. Bentley's putting the lens in for me. Look at that fit. I got this to go okay. It was, I had to re-bend the bend that was bent from being bent on the inside to get the pin to kind of come through correctly, but it's going to do the thing. Just got to put the chrome on, you know, because that'll help us get home. And then uh, slide the pin in and we're done. I have to fix the inside of the trunk still, though. Got them started? Yep. Did you get your turbo painted? Yeah, it's dry. What color did you go for? I'm like a glittery, shiny gray. Ooh, like aluminum? Yeah. Look. Should have done this in the first place. Boom. This pan was put in way back in the day. Actually, Jessica helped me. She's the one that welded in the trunk supports and stuff like that. And that's where we initially really started realizing there's nothing to weld to in here. It's all, it's gone. This is all just r rusted metal. Well, there would blow right through it. So this was all pop riveted in. I think I'm just gonna try to bend it all back down. Maybe run some self tappers through it. 
just to get some rigidity back in our fuel system. It really isn't that bad right now, actually, but at least try to get this gap here closed up in case we have a tire fire or something like that. You don't want any holes, you know, in here. Yeah. Sa hip. Well, I really bent up. Oh, gonna have to get a wristyectomy when this is done. Okay. Ah, ooh, them are wires. Ah, gentle. Ooh, is it time for supper? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not even hungry, so. Yeah. I wonder what Clint Black's doing today. He's probably down at Ernie's Ice House, lifting long necks, you know. That seems to work pretty good. No, but that's what we got. Welding, zzz, zzz, zzz. welding, zzz. welding some more. Zzz. Ooh, nice bead. Welding over here too. Zzz. Well, brand and new. That's all in there, and everything's sitting pretty taunt. If I could fit my boot in here, I'll just kick that down. Well, let me just... Okay, that's fixed. Look pretty good. Pretty sure this has never happened, but... Win in Tennessee. And that's why this barely even makes wind. Huh, this can't be real, is it? Yeah, no, nothing nice. At least get my fuel tank clean so I can fill this without stuff falling in. There. Trunk complete. Oh, just friction fit. All right, time to try to get this on. As good a rester as possible. Chip Foose keeps calling, but I'm busy. You know, I got I got stuff going on. Well, my fear came true. Uh, one, two, three. The bondo was too thick and it just didn't grab. The rest are hanging in there. So I'm gonna replace those with a machine screw, washer and nut, and it'll all look similar from a distance, but give us a bite that we're looking for. I'll drill those out in a second. Got this in there. Not too shabby. We actually have what resembles a quarter panel from 300 yards, if you close your eyes. Well, that's, that's pretty good. All right, one more. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's really pulling it in a lot better. I want to cover up that tin down there. Hindsight being 14, 16, maybe I should have squirted her some paint before I put it together, but that's all right. 
for some of you that are newer to the show, all this is faked. Um, it was ratty, don't get me wrong, but all of the stripes were so faded. You'll have to go back and look at the early videos on the Chevelle, but most of the stripes were this gold color. So I put all these layers in here and sanded it, and those are screwdriver scratches and all that. I guess I call it Fox Tina. It's sanded. These streaks are all airbrush, things like that. That's a panel I already riveted on, scratched up, banged on it, sanded out the stars. The roof was pretty much all gold. So I restriped all this and again aged it all sanded it out and stuff like that. But long story short, that red was special made to match. I think there was some stripes left somewhere on the car. I think it was the other side. And I don't have that. So I'm gonna throw some brown in here and then a little bit of red. And just, well, that was supposed to be brown. I had a brown cap. It is not. That is gray. <laughs> Great. And just so it's not shiny. Silver, I guess, would be the goal. Maybe all brown, it would just look like rust. Let's see what I got. Well, I went with gray, that bright red, brown, spritz in some black, and that's what I could do for now. Lens in a little bit. I got to wait a little bit more and I can sand this. Start aging that up. Okay. I think captain's side is done, a lot better. Now we can move our attention over to the drinker side, see if I can get that big wall up out of there. I think I can just massage this with the cattle prod here. Nope, that's not. Oh, maybe. Boy, that was really... Locked pretty hard. I wonder if a guy got. Okay. Oh, all the work on this paint. Yep. Ah, ah, ah. Flying out at me. Oh, we got more metal down here. Look at that. <laughs> I think we'll put a pop rivet in. One of those bolts. Well, I think the body work is done. Looks brand new. No, nope. but I mean, I think it looks tremendously better. I was, I can't get it out of my head. It was like watching Christine, just the body like come back into shape. This thing wants to live. It just will not give up ever, period. Okay, I got to fix this fan or figure out what's going on with this fan. I forgot about that. We ran at uh, Bristol. I didn't want to not do the burnout, but we were risking overheating, which obviously is bad on the engines. But everyone was there, and everyone wants to see the car, so we just sent it with one fan. Thankfully, she's pretty well dialed in. We didn't get hot even with just one fan ripping, but I do want to fix that. We did take the hood off just to get the heat out. You know, we'll probably do that again down in Florida because I don't know what phase two is for independence, independence 2.0 or whatever we're going to call it. But I want to keep this engine and transmission intact, obviously, for whatever that may be. So let's just do some digital troubleshooting. Great. That's fun. So if you remember, this hood's gonna look funny because it's got two bolts in it, I think. Maybe three. There's two ways this fan runs. The ECU, when it gets to, I think it's 185 degrees and then 205 or something, I don't know what it is, I can't remember. Kicks one fan on, then the other fan on. Or there's a switch up there in the cockpit. No, there's only like four switches, but one of them, there's a bunch of words on it, but I think it says on. When you flip that up, it just overrides the ECU and kicks both fans on just full tilt. Looks like one of them paddle boats down the river, just 
you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, when I do the full tilt mode, I only got one fan. I'll show you. That's this fan. Nothing. That one's ripping. So basically, fan motor, fan relay, or potentially failed fitting or wire or something like that, ground maybe. We'll take a look here though. So these fans are now wired over to these relays. Each fan has its own relay. So I think what I'm going to do is just figure out which relay is working. Well, I mean, I guess fan relay combo, right? So for example, if this is the wire that goes to the fan that's working, I'm going to plug it into that relay. And if the fan is now not working, then I could easily assume that that relay is bad and then to check it, I'll just take this one off and plug it into this relay. And then if this, this fan then now works, then both fan motors are good, just a bad relay. And I hope that's as far as we got to go because, you know, I'll show you where I don't want to go. Down this up, uh, down in here is where I, I would really prefer to just, you know, just stay out of there. Well, I thought I clicked the fan button. Oh, I did, but I got them unplugged. <laughs> Speaking of fans, why does the guy got the ceiling fans on? It's only 25 degrees in here. Anyway, all right, this guy. Okay. So that's the fan that wasn't working. That's the other fan. Yeah, so I, I believe I just have a smoke relay, which is fantastic news. Otherwise I'd be overnight in a cooling fan. Don't want to do that. Well, a guy did snip on in the town and snagged on a relay here. Dorman, help. Thing, whatever. It's a five pin. We'll pop this in. Make sure it fixes the fan. Well, before I, you know, tin roof screw these back in, I got them just kind of laying and they're loose. So we'll flip the switch, make sure they fire, and then we'll screw them in. This isn't the right one. This is to a pickup truck. I don't know where I placed the other one. Two of the holes actually fit. Thank you, Chevrolet. I could make those work with the other style bolts, but we're going to let her be because I'm sure I'll find the right one here and I'm looking for something entirely different. Still got only one. I'm going to have to look at the relay and make sure all the pins are the same as the old one because I just hooked it up how the old one was. This is really going to surprise you, but I might have improperly diagnosed this. We would assume it was just a relay with the simple, you know, testing that we did, but turns out it's not. New ray, relay didn't fix it, so I started testing the trigger wire, which is a blue. So normally you'd have like in the setup a temperature switch, for example, uh, that would trigger a relay to send the high power through to the fan. One of them's got nine which is the fan that's working. And I believe it's something like 9.2 or 9.4 volts is like the minimum voltage needed to switch a 12 volt relay. Could be wrong, but I know it's in the nines. Any hoose. Here's what I'm saying. The other one's got, I don't know, six and change voltage assists. It's weak. So what's happening is when I'm toggleizing the switch and ain't toggleizing the relay, which ain't fan on the fan. So now I've got to do exactly what I didn't want to do, chase all this wiring back through into the car, most likely all the way back to that switch, and figure out why I'm getting sufficient power on one and not the other. Great. Well, I got to cut out 38,000 zip ties, wire fasteners. And then I think I got it all traced up into a wire stick that comes up in here. So I'm just going to pull this out, see if we got a loose connection or something in here. Oh, I'm in deep, but I found it. 
set of two wires running from the fan switch up to the relays. There's only one comes down into this mumbo jumbo that ties into fan outputs for ECU and then an input trigger to override the ECU. However, the fan switch is currently on. Now I got no fans, but watch this. We got bad connections. So I'm gonna take all this apart, redo it, and that should fix our issue. Got it just loosely wired together. Test it. Yep. Yep. All right, I know the issue. Well, a guy could just wire nut that together, throw some digital tape on her and fixed. But the truth is it's gonna happen again. Here's why. This has got 12 volts coming in. Okay, or really close. That's what the battery's got left on it. Been running the fans all along. We know factually, scientifically, we're only getting nine volts and change at the relay. Reason being is this is the wrong gauge wire significantly. So I'm gonna have to rewire all this just to prevent this from happening again. So new wire from the switch, and down to the junction, the junction up to the relays. So here's what a guy's pulling out. And that's what I'm going to be replacing it with. Also, guy wants to get this taped up, make it a little bit nicer. I got him cut at the same length and got him chucked up here. Give it a nice slow twirl. Not too much now. It'll just end up creating a bunch of impedance. But that'll work just enough to keep it organized. And we can run some digital tape over this now. All right, failures. All this rewired, got her all tucked up in there, taped and loomed and everything. And I'll be dipped. Both fans screaming. Biggest thing is, we have the exact battery voltage at the relays. That's the most important part. We're good there. This is gonna last. Fans! Check that off the list. Let's get it up in the air. I need to look at this rear end. When we came around and hit that barrier, the wheel took, you know, 91.72% of the brunt. So let's make sure that that's gonna hang in one last time. And then I also gotta change the Mags out and we'll mount some burnout wheels and tires. Get those on the car so when we roll it off the trailer, she's ready to rock. Easy way to tell independence was on the lift. Moses sandals. Checking on all the frame patches. A little bit of a drip out of the drain plug, but we'll pretend we didn't see that. That one's pretty good. New rust. There, patch there, another patch here. It's looking pretty good. Big patch here, new rust coming in above that. Oh, just can't, once it's in there guys, it just keeps going, this is really bad. There's just no stability left. This rear end setup really saved most of the frame and this hitch. Uh, really quick, just glancing at this, I think we're fine. See how this right here is almost straight up and down. The bottom is kicked over, just a scooch. But I mean, barely anything. That's going to be how much the rear moved from lapping it on that side, but I don't see anything, any welds broke or anything like that. Nothing broke up there. Basically, we just have a progressively worse or rusting frame. So that's fine. Let's, uh, let's just bring her down a little bit, 
See if I can get the air jack under here or something. Get these rear tires off. And just like that, we got a two post lift. Oh, you got one more in you. I think if anything, independence has proved 10 bolts really aren't that bad. Stock axle shafts, ring gear, pinion, everything stock other than a mini spool. We were doing 120 60 foots on this thing. Got the old wrist breaker out. Yep. Yep, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta put cheese on your hash browns, fellas. Maybe even a little bit of catsup. Whoa, that doesn't sound good. Great. Let's go tire shopping. Yay. That one's probably good. There's a Mustang. Those are five by Yeah, those are four and three quarter. A white one. It'd be nice to have a matching. Yeah, there's a white one there too. Those must fit right, because... Wow. There's one right here, like this one. And this one. Well, we'll see if we can get these fellers mounted up on these guys. Looks like I need a valve stemmer on that. Get some air in it. A little bit rough on the lips, driving off the skid pad, but you know, we're sealing more on the inner side, so I'm hoping I can bring them around. And these, as you could tell, are a mixture of blue and red, and then right before they pop, they turn white. One up, one to go. No, oh, great. That's the downside. Well, I think a guy's got it licked. The independent Chevelle is ready for its final party in the burnout pit. And I'm gonna do everything I can to make you guys proud. And It'd be neat to place, but that's not why we're doing it. And we agreed that in the first place when you guys wanted to build a burnout car years ago, it means much more than getting a trophy. If you guys want to, there's a few more shirts left. The independent Chevelle, a couple designs, and I believe they're also on sweatshirts over at vicegripgarage.com. And as always, thank you for your support. I appreciate it very much. And we'll see you very, very soon in the results of the burnout competition.